right guys so first things first <laughs> these are really late because I lost my SD card so over the holiday weekend happy Thanksgiving by the way I had company so beforehand I pre-filmed eight count them eight videos and a partial it was really embarrassing because it was it was my little attempt at the skit thing but there was a lot of weird odd singing and dancing that was gonna get edited down to like a second on this SD card that I can't find <laughs> I didn't find it but anyway this which does not is one of the ones that does not fit into my month of no shave November male authors um, but it is one of the ones that I most recently read if I'm gonna have to refilm let me get the most cognizant coherent well verbalized things out of the way so in the month of November I read City of Brass by I believe S.A. Chakra Barty is how you say her name I probably butchered that madam I am so so sorry but this book Guys, this book gave me life. I love this book. I love this book so much. I am catching major glarage. So, The City of Brass. <laughs> City of Brass opens up with Nari in Cairo. Nari is 20-ish. She doesn't really know how old she is. She doesn't know where she came from. She doesn't even know if she's human or not. Because she has this ability to magically heal people and just kind of see the illness or the bad in them and to just be able to metaphysically remove it without touching them. So since she's in this patriarchal society as a young female who has no family, no backers, no really friends or anything, it's very hard for her to support herself. So even as a healer, she's basically a healer by day and then a con artist and a thief by night. She reminds me of Moroku from uh, the Inuyasha anime and that you know I have these abilities but I'm not afraid to like bullshit and tell you there's a demon when there's not or there's an illness when there's not because I need to eat and I need money. In the midst of one of these little setups of hers she set up this giant like tsar basically where she's got like ritualistic animal sacrifice and people are making donations and chanting and singing and dancing and all of these like ritualistic cultural things designed to provide like healing energy to help her heal this girl but in her mind it is total bullshit even though other people are like you shouldn't play with these things she's like nah, 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 poo -poo, go away and it, it it's hilarious to me that she's got this mindset when she's magically healing people and she's like, that's all bullshit. Nari also, in addition to the ability to heal people, can hear language, intake it, and then learn that language automatically. She tells you like she could, someone could say a sentence to her in Mandarin and then automatically after that she can speak um, Mandarin language. So she has all these languages and she knows like when she came across them and how she learned them, but there's this one this one she can't she has no idea where she got it from none whatsoever Nari does this sar and they have warned her don't play with magic don't play with the stuff blah 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 she's like no 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 so she learns the hard way that words and names have power because she speaks this ceremony in the language that she was born knowing and doesn't know where it came from she does this ceremony in this language and accidentally summons Dara or Dara Yavahush who is a X centuries year old angry as fuck Jin. Dara is not the only thing that pops out of wherever she summoned him from. So she basically has dropped herself in the middle of this battle. She doesn't know whose side she's supposed to be on because everybody's telling her different things. So she ends up with Dara and they go on this journey, trek, quest, whatever through the desert. Dara is telling her, you're not fully human. Now over the whole course of this, he feels like she, as a thief, has no honor, she's annoying, she's a brat, and she just doesn't trust him. Because, I mean, you came out of a hole in the ground and started flinging weapons at stuff. I Wait, what? Dara is withholding secrets from her about her and about himself. What I really also enjoy about this book, now these are not the only two main characters. Dara and Nari travel together, and then there's also, you get kind of like another storyline over to the side that later on they merge up. These characters 
are the same. Like all of these characters are so multi-layered and so freaking just secretive. Secretive as fuck. Secretive and manipulative. So it's just like with Nara and Dara and Dara is not telling her how old he really is, where he really came from, some aspects of himself. He's not even sure about whether or not he can tell her because he doesn't know them. He's also withholding secrets about where she's from, who her family is, like what she really is and what that means for her um, as far as having a place in the city that he's taking her to. The people that are in the city have the same, like everybody's just so damn secretive. So people are holding secrets from each, each other about themselves people are holding secrets from each other about each other and there are things that people don't even know about themselves that nobody's knowing and we're learning as we're reading and basically it's like decades centuries millennia old family secrets and everybody is not even what they think they are in the city where being pure-blooded or being this kind of a gin only means something and people are discovering that everybody's not what they're seeming. So it's just a whole lot of like subterfuge and sneaky manipulative stuff and then people being secrets that people don't even know are secrets. Secrets that people have no idea about. I just, I love it so much. Not only is the world very culture rich because Cairo, when it's described in the beginning of the book, is very culture rich in its descriptions in and of itself. But when you get to like the city of Jinn, they have their own cultures and backgrounds and reasons and histories for being split up into different subsets why they are. And I, I just, I love it so much. I enjoyed this book so much. It is a very quick read in that, see, I have stuff, um, this, these tabs aren't things I wanted to, like, discuss. These are tabs, parts of the book that I enjoyed so much, I want to go back and read them again. And I did go back and read them again after I finished this book. This book I, I started because I pre-ordered it so when you pre-order things on Amazon lately they'll give you like the first however many chapters on Kindle until your book is shipped. So I was reading it on Kindle and then when it got here the rest of it I read in like 20 some odd hours. I listened to it at work and then I put it on double speed and just tore through the book in like a day and a half. And it's so freaking good guys. Ugh. I really like I don't know what else to say about it like there is a lot that I could say. But this is one of those books where you really don't want to know too much what's coming because it's like reading the Red Rising trilogy and trying to explain it to somebody. But you can't really because that takes away a lot of the enjoyment from the book because a lot of the things that Pierce Brown does really well is a lot of that like sneaky subterfuge and like characters who aren't really what you thought they were or people who do things you thought they weren't going to do. So it's that same kind of a deal. But it is so beautifully written. The plot is a holy crap. The characters are so fucking manipulative. And they're way, way past tridimensional. We're going to like six, seven, eight different layers per character. And it's amazing to just, even in a book that doesn't technically look that big, even though it's like 500 some odd pages, to just see from page one to page 100 already just in that fifth of the book, character growth and development. So these, like... By the time you get to the end of the book and just seeing the things that shape these characters just inside of the book, let alone the things that you find out that have shaped them as young adults or children however many centuries ago for some of these characters, just holy friggin' crap. And it left off on a part that it wasn't a cliffhanger, but it was just like, it was like a season finale where it wasn't like a who shot JR kind of a season finale cliffhanger, but like the person who's been in a coma the whole fucking season opens their eyes and there's like a close-up zoom in of their eyes opening at the very last second of the season finale and then the screen goes black and they roll the credits it's that kind of like wait what happened kind of a deal like that's not specifically what happened but it's that feeling like it's not specifically a cliffhanger but it's like it's just it just leaves you very eager for the second one so this is the first book in a trilogy, and I believe it's called the David Bod Trilogy. That's the name of the city. So, whoops. <laughs> but yes, you, you've got to read this. It's so amazing, and I really kind of wish I hadn't read it the first week it was released, because <laughs> I don't want to read anything else but the rest of this, and there isn't any yet. So go read this book. It was five stars for me, and I have not yet. I think this is my first high fantasy five star read because a lot of them I like them but they're really dry to me so it takes me a while to just get into it or a lot of them meander so much 
that I get bored or I get distracted, honey, this book kept me sucked in from start to finish. So please go read it. Please, 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 you make me happy if you go read it so I have people to talk about it with. That is it for this review, guys. Thank you for watching. I will talk to you later, but please also read City of Press. Bye! <laughs>